Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In the last episode, we looked at how Southern fire eaters took advantage of the opportunity presented by Lincoln's election and the panic that it caused in the South by seizing on that panic, doing what they could to really stoke its flames and kind of uh, rushing secession through without uh, giving any deliberative process. Um, and uh, this week, I wanna look at how Lincoln himself actually played into that uh, with this very mysterious silence uh, from the time of his election almost up until his inauguration. Um, we're going to look at uh, a couple of passages from historian William J. Cooper's book, We Have the War Upon Us, which is about that critical period between November 1860 and April of 1861. Cooper argues that, that Lincoln just did not understand the South. I mean, he had been born in Kentucky, and as a youth, he had made a couple of trips down the Mississippi River to New Orleans. Um, you know, he had served one term in Congress in the late 1840s and had some friendly acquaintances from the South, uh, most notably Alexander H. Stevens of Georgia. And if you check out one of my past episodes, um, I actually uh, quote from a letter that Stevens wrote Lincoln during the secession crisis. Um, but they had not maintained a correspondence over the years, really. Um, and so Lincoln just didn't, it's fair to say he did not have his finger on the pulse of the South, and that uh, probably had uh, a damaging impact on his ability to really head off this crisis. With no first-hand knowledge of the South and having no real friends or even serious acquaintances among the Southern politicians, Lincoln unsurprisingly did not acknowledge the distinction between fire eaters, the zealous advocates of secession, and men like Stevens and even Jefferson Davis who were fundamentally conservative with no relish for disunion. Lincoln appears not to have understood the political force pressed by the fire eaters on Southern conservatives and regulars. While Lincoln's ignorance of the South powerfully influenced his adamant opposition to compromise, his actions also made clear that he approached the crisis not as president-elect of the United States, but as leader of the Republican Party. Moreover, by November 1860, he had spent but a few months as party chief. That brief tenure left him unsure about the security of his leadership and anxious about party unity. During the crisis, many Republicans and non-Republicans alike urged him to make a public statement addressing the issues, reassuring Southerners of their rights and his determination to be president of all Americans, Southern as well as Northern. Time and time again, Lincoln refused. Responding to this cascade of requests, Lincoln embraced a mantra, I could say nothing which I have not already said and which is in print and open to inspection to all. Repetition, as he phrased it, could only harm his political position. In his inflexibility, he seemed not to fathom that the most vigorous rhetoric in some of what he had already said could terrify the South. Additionally, never did Lincoln acknowledge that every one of those statements had been made as a Republican partisan, not as the next president of a country. Furthermore, none of those declarations had been made when the country faced a monumental crisis. No group begged more for Lincoln to speak out than border state conservatives. Facing the emotion-laden tidal wave generated by disunionists, they lamented that they had no foothold to fight the secessionists. One urged a close friend of Lincoln to remind the president-elect, and Lincoln did get this message, that unless something was done within the next 30 days to avert the tide of passion in the South, he will be inaugurated on the 4th March as the pressed of a divided empire. These pleaders entreated Lincoln to come before the public while he could still do some good. In heaven's name, a Kentuckian cried, in the name of and for the salvation of our common beloved country, can you not do, say, something to calm the storm now threatening us all? Lincoln obviously never stepped forward publicly in an effort to conciliate alarmed Southerners. If he had, given his unmatched gift for crafting the befitting phrases for a particular political moment, one might imagine his theme if not his words. Such an address could have noted his recognition that he was not one of them and that he represented a party perceived by the multitude of Southerners as their enemy. 
He would have quickly countered, however, we are all still Americans, and during his presidency, neither he nor his party would in any way try to harm the South. Not once did Lincoln ever say publicly that he would be president of all Americans. In wedding himself to the Republican platform and claiming he could never deviate from it, he acted like a partisan's partisan, not the leader of a country. Now, you might be thinking, what difference would it really have made for Lincoln to say anything? South Carolina is going to South Carolina. You know, the lower South was probably all going to secede. But one thing to keep in mind is that actually in some of the lower South states, it was actually much closer. They were much more closely divided between unionists and secessionists. But also from the perspective of William H. Seward, who was uh, Lincoln's choice for Secretary of State, it was key to keep the border states and the upper South in the Union. Uh, Seward believed that as long as they did that, if, 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 if the upper South and border states held, then eventually the lower South would, would come back. Um, we'll never know if that was true, but that's what Seward thought, and that's why this was like very much a live issue. Um, in my companion post on my website, I've got uh, some more content about that, about sort of the political differences between Lincoln and Seward, and also um, some correspondence between Lincoln and one of those anti-secession congressmen from North Carolina. So it's interesting stuff. And if you're not checking those posts out, you're missing out because they really do supplement the content on this channel. And speaking of this channel, I hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already. We're getting close on a thousand subscribers. Also, I hope you'll hit the like button, comment with your thoughts and share this video with anyone you think might be interested. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.